Happy Halloween from Tales from SYL Ranch, the Bitchu channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. And as a warning to parents, please remember that the epidemic of type 2 diabetes in the U.S. is due to people eating nothing but foods laden with processed sugar for their entire lives. So try to moderate your children's candy eating in the future. Consider putting them on a diet of low sugar and low carbohydrate foods. You'll be sparing them from type 2 diabetes later in life. You can even point to me as an example. I am retired and drawing disability, with type 2 diabetes being one of the contributing factors. Now, while I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch stores on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. Now, I'm stepping a little bit outside of my brand today to, by discussing the new TV show, Batwoman. There will be some politics involved, because how could there not be with a show with a lesbian main character and a lot of SJW overtones? But a lot of things have really started bugging me about this show, and I feel the need to publicly vent. So I hope you stay with me, even when I get into both the realism and general narrative of this show. Now, I would be a bit remiss, remiss if I didn't explain the history of this character in comics. This is the original Silver Age Batwoman. Her first appearance was in Detective Comics number 233 in July of 1956. She predates the modern Batgirl who first appeared in Detective Comics number 359 in January of 1967. So in 1956, DC Comics editor Jack Shift suggested to Batman creator Bob Kane that he create a new character that would be part of what would become the Batman family. A female character was chosen in order to offset charges that Batman and Robin were homosexual. This version was Kathy Kane, a wealthy Gotham City heiress and former circus performer who decided to use her skills and resources to become a costumed crime fighter. This was partly out of altruism and partly to attract the romantic attentions of Batman. During the Silver Age of comics, Batwoman guest starred occasionally in Batman stories published from 1956 to 1964. She was seen most recently on the TV series Batman, The Brave and the Bold, which was a much lighter depiction of Batman that drew heavily from the Silver Age source material. She was not an exact counterpart of Batman. She had, uh, did not have a utility uh, belt, as he did, but rather a utility purse. <laughs> yes, utility purse. And the contents were actually weapons disguised as stereotypical female accoutrements, such as lipstick, cosmetic compacts, charm bracelets, and hairnets. Obviously, this character wouldn't work today. Even non-SJWs like myself would find it laughable. SJWs, of course, would go completely insane. The modern Batwoman made her first appearance in 52, that's the comic book 52, issue number 7 in August of 2006. Rather. The backstory of the character is extremely complicated due to various writers having dealt with her over the years. As with many modern age characters, her backstory and origins tend to change over time. Consistently, however, she has been Kate Kane a confirmed lesbian, and similar to the TV show, she was a former cadet at a military school. However, unlike the TV show, this was actually the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. As with the TV show, she was cashiered when she entered a lesbian relationship with another cadet. Unlike the TV series, her parents were both military officers, Colonel Jacob Kane and Captain Gabby Kane. That's largely the only areas in which the comics and TV shows are similar. I have admittedly never read the character's story in comics. The modern age of DC Comics is its own hot mess. I'm largely turned off of it, despite being a lifelong fan of Superman. In fact, if you want to see what I was doing before I changed the format of this show to political commentary, I have a very lengthy review of the 1978 Superman movie that describes my personal history with this character, and there are links to that in the description box. So here we get to the Batwoman TV series. It is clearly an SJW version of the character and is irritating on that level. 
It's not as SJW as the trailers and commercials made it to appear. It could have been far worse. <laughs> now, I have no objections to being a, a lesbian character and uh, never have because Ruby Rose is herself a lesbian. She can play this both well and convincingly. My objection is to the character herself. As with many modern female-led movies and TV shows, the current Star Wars trilogy being a prime example, the character is portrayed as being perfect in every way, at least on the surface. <laughs> she has no character flaws that she must overcome. She is an expert at everything that took the Batman years of training to master. She can use every bat gadget in his arsenal with ease and no training. When she fouls up, the fault is never with her, but rather the equipment. This is a fantastically shallow and utterly uninteresting way to present any character, particularly someone who's taking on the mantle of the Batman. However, this is an SJW TV series. Kate Kane is absolutely perfect. She must be portrayed such, because to do otherwise might be to hint that the women aren't anything other than total equals to men. Men, in fact, are depicted as either bumbling idiots or pig-headed pig -headed morons because this is an SJW TV show. Men must always be made to look inferior to the women around them. But again, this is fantastically shallow and utterly uninteresting. Kate Kane could be showed as a competent individual with character flaws who has to occasionally fall on her face before she realizes she needs to train herself with all the bat gear. It has been long established in every incarnation of Batman that Bruce Wayne had to train long and hard to master both himself and the bat gear that he carries around. But Kate Kane is a woman who is perfect in every way, and being perfect from the beginning is just plain boring. From the moment you start watching the show, you keep waiting for a moment when her lack of training trips her up. You're also waiting to see some level of character flaw or pathos that she has to overcome. But because she's an SJW perfect woman, there's none of this, and the character is downright boring. The problem is further complicated by Ruby Rose's portrayal of the character, which I'll get to in a minute. There are other SJW overtones in Batwoman, but they pale in comparison to Kate Kane being perfect in every way. Now, what compounds all of this are the amazing problems with the story, narrative, and logic shown so far. <sighs> I have to admit that the show completely lost me within the first five minutes of the first episode, because in it, Kate is handcuffed at the feet and then is shown diving into the bottom of a lake to retrieve the key uh, to the handcuffs. She then swims to the top of the lake, which is completely frozen over with several inches of ice that she must break through in order to get out. And then she crawls out, panting and heaving, as you see here. Now, I've lived most of my life in parts of the U.S. where it gets cold enough for the top of a lake to freeze, so solid that you can safely walk around on it. Last winter alone, we had temperatures that went as low as minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 52 degrees below the freezing point of water. And as your body is mostly water, this becomes a problem. If you go outside without a heavy coat, hats, scarves, and your entire body covered, you risk frostbite within minutes. In comparison, as a contrast to the insanity that you see with Kate Kane, this is me in winter garb. It was 18 degrees Fahrenheit with a wind chill of, of, minus, of 12 degrees rather, when I had to make a walk of only four blocks this morning. Had I not been wearing this, I'd have risked frostbite to my face, head, fingers, and feet. Had I been out long uncovered, I would have risked hypothermia and death. All of that for a walk of only four blocks in an air temperature of 12 degrees, which is only, you know, 20 degrees below the freezing point of water and your body. Dressed as Kate Kane is shown here, she would simply die. A bra and panties offers absolutely no protection from the uh, cold. Furthermore, the water itself is fantastically cold. Just because there's a layer of ice on top doesn't mean that what's below is warm. And then crawling out of the ice, drenched as Kate is here, is certain death. Once out of the lake, the water covering her body would begin to freeze instantly. In short, the first five minutes of the first episode broke my suspension, suspension of disbelief because Kate should have been dead by six different forms of hypothermia. This is indicative of the SJW nonsense. Kate is perfect, after all. She can defy the laws of physics and be immune to hypothermia. 
However, this perfection is only on the surface. She's the person for perfect replacement for Batman with absolutely no training. But when you realize and think about what the character is doing, you find that it's far from perfect. In fact, it's utterly reckless and often leads to preventable deaths. Kate never thinks about this twice. Her main antagonist is Alice, a character written as a rather subpar joker. Alice is Kate's long-lost sister, considered dead for decades. And what other pathos exists in the show is Kate attempting to reconnect with Alice while Alice runs around murdering people. On multiple occasions, Kate intentionally allows Alice to peacefully leave despite the certain knowledge that Alice will continue to murder people. What the frack? There is absolutely no incarnation of Batman that would ever do this. Given the opportunity, he'd have captured this multiple murderer and strung her up for the police to find. In fact, in a recent storyline called Hush in the comics, it's revealed that Bruce Wayne's childhood best friend is a bad guy. The Batman doesn't just let him walk. Despite being an old and cherished friend, Batman captures him and turns him over to the cops. And then there's Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose is the least intimidating woman to ever come to a bat role. She is five foot seven, and as you can see here, clearly, she is anorexic. The camera may add 10 pounds, but that doesn't alter the fact that she's a bit short and thin as a rail. Compared to every other incarnation of the Batman, who has, had a, has been a superb athlete and has the physique of a bodybuilder, Ruby Rose's um, Batman, Batwoman is anything but intimidating. And intimidation is key to any bat role. Ruby Rose is simply a bit short and anorexic, and she is no way intimidating. And then there's Ruby Rose's performance. Now, I liked Ruby Rose when she performed Wendy in the TV series Dark Matter. Now, I've not seen her other work, but based on Dark Matter, I thought we'd see a pretty good performance. Unfortunately, she's a block of wood. Revelations such as that like Bruce Wayne being Batman should be shocking particularly considering that it's established early on that Kane has a ridiculous and irrational hatred of Batman. The revelation of his secret identity should be shocking because Bruce Wayne is Kathy Kane's cousin, someone she knew and respected. And it's like that throughout. Ruby Rose seems completely incapable of delivering any point more than a tight-lipped, smiling smirk, no matter what she's reacting to. And that's the only part of some of the reasons that Batwoman is a hot mess. I mean, I could delve into the nitty-gritty of the SJW-ness that permeates the show, but it would be frankly long and boring. However, oh, I should give an honorable mention to Rachel Maddow. They hired this discredited, annoying, journalistic failure to be the voice of a radio talk show heard occasionally throughout the series. I really dislike Rachel Maddow this journalist, and every single time her voice is heard on this show, it's like fingernails on a blackboard. Well, that's all I have to say about that. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So, thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have this for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.